So the next step is I'm going to teach you guys the universal fire safety arm rules. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do I think about Warrior Poet Society YouTube reaching 1 million subscribers? It's, it's uh, you know, that's fine. It's pretty cool. Can't really expect me to, you know, make too much of a big deal out of that, but... Well, what about the giveaway then? The items in the giveaway? Oh, the giveaway is big. The giveaway is real big. We got ETS mags, we got vault -Tec safes, we got Raven targets, a War Poet, Shadow System, the 9mm pistol. We got John Lovell's War Belt. Uh, we got tickets to the Warrior Poet Society adventure trip with the crew. Grand prize, that's big, that's big. If you if you like airplanes, you're gonna be in one. Um, if you don't, then you don't really have to worry about that because it's, it's just a small portion of the trip. Um, but ain't, ain't been released yet, from what I know, five-star destinations, it's safe to say. You, uh, you're gonna be winning big, you're gonna be winning big. You won't regret winning the grand prize, let me. Let me put it that way. Get involved, you gotta go to www.warriorpoetsociety.us. You can't miss it. You're gonna see me up there up front with John Lovells and everyone else on the team. Click that banner. It's gonna bring you to the uh, subscription page. You sign up right there. Put in your information, hit submit, you're good to go. Oh, if they're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, that's no problem. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I don't know why you haven't yet. Um, and then go ahead to our website. I, I actually don't know what, what what they're supposed to do if they're not subscribed. Subscribe to you. Oh, okay. I did it. I did it. Cool. Heck yeah. All right, hey folks, welcome back. Today we're talking about some of the hardware and some of the hard learned lessons regarding kids and firearms in the home. I'm joined by a former ex-girlfriend of mine. This what? Is, this is... <laughs> Definitely your wife. Yeah, but a wife is an ex-girlfriend because you're no longer my girlfriend. That's just true. So yeah. anyway, we're okay. going to go Roll one for one and talk about some <laughs> of the hard learned lessons. These are important. We'll mm. have a spirit of levity about them. But without further ado, the very first one is don't make forbidden fruit with your kids. Mm. If you have this gun and you say, this is a dangerous gun, don't look, don't touch, you can have this thing that's enchanting and they want to get access to it. Instead, we can diffuse this with our kids by saying, hey, guns are dangerous and we have them because we love you and we want to protect you against bad people. Mm -hmm. But they're very, very dangerous. Anytime you ever want to see daddy's gun or mommy's gun, all you have to do is ask and the answer is yes. And so under our supervision, they can see it and interact with it based on what is appropriate and what is safe in your home, <laughs> keeping with the universal fire and safety rules, of course. And in this way, you don't make... Forbidden fruit. That's right. What's the second one? What, what can people We teach from? our kids the sing-along song. It's from Eddie the Eagle. And it's short, but it is memorable. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is our debut international of fire saga, Eurovision. <laughs> no, not really. So you say, stop, don't touch, run away, tell a grown up, stop, don't touch. It repeats. He don't, promised don't be he would No, I with didn't me. promise. You did promise. I just didn't Press say I it. wouldn't. Yeah, you did. But you Cameraman's did, you did on lovely, my side. fantastic. Yeah, so, but our kids can sing that back. They know it and they've even, um, called to us, mommy, there's a gun. I stopped, I didn't touch, and I ran and told you, and it was a toy gun they had found. It's but so they... funny to see him like skirt around it like it's lava they on did the floor. Protocol. And I'm there with it as well, but they're like, <gasps> and that's when they were a little bit yeah. younger. Yeah. Again, our season of life and our kids and stuff, it's where we are, and yours may be a little bit diff uh, different, so it's not necessarily turnkey advice. It's general principles that you can take away. All right, third hard learned lesson is childhood is a perpetual treasure hunt. It's a treasure hunt to kids and they never stop until they move away from the house. When I was growing up, my dad had a gun safe in his closet and I looked for the key to his safe. This is no joke. I looked for the keys for years. He'd go out of town. I'm kind of like, dad's gone. Let's pick up where I left off looking for that key. And even if you think, oh, my angel would never. Yes, they would. Mm. Don't fall prey to that. Everyone thinks my kids would never or or you think that you will be able to hide the gun in a place that your kids won't find it, don't be naive. It happens all the time and every single time the parents are shocked when the inevitable happens. The kids will find it. I knew every nook and cranny of my house growing up 
and your kids will do the exact same thing whether you agree with me or not. It's not worth the risk. Re recognize they are always on a perpetual treasure hunt until they move out of the house. So don't think you can hide guns where they won't find them. So next you should show them the real danger. So I remember on a trip to Tennessee once, uh, the kids were really young, maybe three and five. And so John had planned outdoors to shoot with an AR, uh, Tannerite from a distance, but he had the little boys right beside him. I was there too. So they heard the big bang of the gun and they also saw the huge explosion. And we used that as a really big teaching moment to show them guns are dangerous. Guns go boom. Guns are always bigger and more dangerous and scary than you expected or planned. At that age, and for right now in the season we're in, we do want them to be afraid of them in a concerned way. And later on, that'll move to a careful, safe respect for guns. But right now, when we're little, this is what we want for them. All right, number five is stage guns with caution. Some of you aren't gonna be able to get away with staging. You're gonna have to lock up your guns. But let's say you have a one-year-old. They can barely walk and you choose to take an AR-15 and there's nothing in the chamber right now, but there's a full magazine. And let's say I've got this up top on a shelf in my house. This allows me to be able to, in a moment, grab this gun off a shelf, pick it up, and then chamber it, and then I'm ready to uh, shoot. Uh, and I know that there's no chance that my one-year-old would be able to get the gun off the top shelf. And then even if they did get the gun, there's no way that they're going to have the strength to be able to rack around and then put that gun into action. And that's for a one-year-old. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, a five-year-old is a climber. And I bet in today's age with video games, they might actually know how to work that thing. So always assume that if it's like, I bet at seven they can do it. Then make sure that you do it at five. Always stay way, way ahead. Yeah because you may be in a home that you could get away with staging a gun. If you're a bachelor, you got no kids, and kids never visit your home, you can stage guns in a ready condition at all times. I, for a long time with our kids, aircraft loaded guns. Now, I'm not saying what I do or don't do now. I'm just providing information about what may or may not work for you. But you may be in a situation where you can aircraft load. That means there's nothing in the pipe and there is a full magazine ready to go. We call it aircraft loading because when I used to fly around on helicopters and uh, airplanes and such, you were supposed to have nothing in the pipe and then a magazine, and then barrels were always facing downward, and then when you got off the bird and you were hitting your objective, then you'd go ahead and rack so that you're ready to uh, play army. So uh, there you go. As the kids are getting older too, it may not be just your children that the guns are a threat to. Your guns may be trained, they know how to behave around a gun from what you've taught them, but it's when their friends come over. That's right. What if they're playing hide and go seek in the back bedroom or something and one of the kids' friends takes a risk and a chance that they shouldn't because they haven't been trained on guns. So That's they've got to be way out of reach at all times once your kids reach an age of um, the ability to hurt themselves or others. And never underestimate the power of peer pressure. Maybe your kid, all things from any equal, is awesome mm -hmm. and would never, ever, ever touch that gun. However, the peer pressure of men, they really wanted to show this gun because mm -hmm. if they did, they're going to be in that cool group or a girl and her boyfriend visits or whatever. All kinds of things can happen that would cause your child to act very, very different and you can't leave anything to chance. My dog is howling. Good girl. So the sixth thing you want to teach your kids is the universal firearm safety rules. From a young age, they need to know how to treat guns as if all guns are loaded and they're real, real guns. So even our kids in our epic Nerf battles, they have trigger discipline with their finger off the trigger until they're ready to shoot. So it's these little playful tactics that can really be ingrained in their mind and they remember these important rules to handle guns properly. To demonstrate that, I'm going to teach you by teaching my dog, Peyton. I need you to know. Are you ready? Treat all guns as if they're loaded. Do not put your paw on the trigger until you are ready to shoot. <laughs> Do not point the gun at anything you're not willing to destroy. And for goodness sakes, know what's beyond your target. 
Lessons learned. It's a low point. Lessons learned. All right, the seventh and final hard learn lesson before we get into some of the hardware stuff is do safety audits often, regularly. Your kids are getting older and you're going to have a unique feng shui about how you go about safety in your home. We're always trying to balance accessibility so that we can be able to defend ourselves and safety as well. And if you have to err on one of the two, especially when your kids are younger uh, and haven't come of age and are driving and stuff, is I would err on the side of safety. Statistically speaking, I'm like, man, uh, there was a, a gal, a little girl, yeah. Locally. What was that? In our community. So the mom left her in the car just for a couple of minutes, I guess, to do something. The girl found a loaded pistol in the glove compartment and shot herself fatally. How, how old was Accidentally. she? Accidentally. She was five. That was not that long ago, was it? It was last year. You're going to have to understand the ages of your kids, how many kids you have, neighbors around, especially bad influences. The gender of your child does make a difference as well. And also just the general temperament. Are they rule followers? Are they kind of got a little bit of a wild streak? And you're going to have to temper according to your kids. But when all else fails, don't let kids get access to guns. That leads us into some of the hardware stuff. And I already told you, don't ever try to play outplay a kid whose whole childhood is treasure hunting. You can't hide it. And so ultimately, being able to lock this stuff up is very, very important. Now, there's some options that I really hate. It's this option. This is like a cable lock. And so it requires a little key. And I think that's trash because now you got to find a little key. They're good for like gun shows and stuff, but I hate these things. There's also trigger locks. It can get in there and it needs a key as well. And keys are really bad. I don't like that. You don't want to have to find a little key in the dark when all of a sudden you need a gun. Something like a little touch safe, and some of these will open with a fingerprint or it's just a real quick access code. And that was obviously not the right code, but these will pop open and then you can rock and roll with your gun. Um, there's other stuff coming up, and I will uh, uh, consider this later. I'm still testing this, but neat little thing like this. So here, you can't get this thing off unless you push these buttons in the right order. And, and uh, once you know the thing, it comes with a factory set like this, so I can change it, but it's basically this with all three of these. And then I can rip it off and then I can go. And so it's a way to secure this and lock this gun. So now I could keep this loaded with this in it and just put this under a bed or in a closet or wherever you want to. But now it's kind of like it is locked up and secured. And maybe that's how I wanted to go about it. Or I could do something like an actual gun safe. There's other things that allow you to put stuff on the wall and it's, it's a little bit less uh, robust as actually having a full gun safe. I like a gun safe, especially if you can open up really quickly in the dark while your hands are shaking. So that's kind of a prerequisite. Uh, I'll show you this one. Very good and opens right up and i've got some body armor a gas mask and i happen to put in this girl right here oh yeah for some fun and uh good to go so anyway folks to ease your search i'm gonna go ahead and provide some links down below for all the stuff that i like and i've used and i recommend so you can make sure you get the right thing Make sure you subscribe no, to the channel. No, 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 no. Let me close this one down while we take the brownies to I'll the office. I'll definitely take for brownies the guys. for the guys. So like, comment, subscribe, share. Maybe this video will help a lot of families getting more comfortable with using firearms and save some kids' lives. That's right. Very good. Train hard, train smart. We'll see you next time.